Hey guys and welcome to this brand new video. Today we will talk about Lattice Semiconductor, another stock in the semi-series. So if you're interested in whether Lattice Semiconductor is a stock to be invested in, stay on and also please consider checking out the other stocks in this semi-series. I would especially advise you to take a look at LAM Research, ASML and Applied Materials. All pretty interesting stocks right now. Well, let's take a closer look at Lattice Semiconductor. And first of all, we can see that their market is comms and computing, industrial and automotive, as well as consumer. And their products are programmable luggage, software, and video connectivity. Let's take a more detailed look into products. So, for example, this one is some kind of chips that can do some kind of smart thing. I think if you want to take a really detailed look in it, probably check them out or watch some YouTube videos. Okay, with that said, let's take a look at a few numbers as we always do. And we do that by taking a look at Seeking Alpha. And the first thing we can see, Lattice Semiconductor has a market cap of roughly $7 billion, PE ratio of 30.77, and we can see earnings per share of $1.67. All in all, quite nice. Apart, well, PE ratio is quite high, but we'll take a look at whether that is justified or not. The first thing that I would like to do is take one more brief look at financials before we take a closer look into their investor relation. And as always, the first thing we do is take a look at the revenue and we can see that from 2012 to today, the revenue grew. But we can also see that there were times, for example, from December 2016 to December 2017, 2018, 2019 and 2021, where the revenue wasn't growing, but more or less stayed on the same. But now in January 2022, we can see that the revenue now is at a new all-time high and in the trading 12 months we can see that the revenue is definitely the highest ever love it and another thing the shares outstanding increased and the EBIT also increased to 143 million from 0.8 million which is very very solid but we can see in 2016 and 2017 we had a loss so lettuce semiconductor basically made no profit and the last thing is net debt or something i think is very interesting and we can see we've got roughly 60 billion uh, 60 million in net debt so that's a really solid number because we just saw a bit of 140 billion so i think it's quite easy to repay that debt if they have to. With that said, there's one more thing to add, I'm sorry. We can see no dividend rate and so no dividend yield. Let's take a closer look at their business model, Lettuce Semiconductor, the low power programmable leader. Corporate overview, August 2022. The low power programmable leader. So Lettuce Semiconductor, application and markets. So we can see that com communication and computing accounts for roughly 42% of their markets. Assume it is revenue, yes, revenue. Then industrial and automotive accounts for 44% of the, of the revenue of lettuce semiconductor and consumer in licensing service, 14%. World class supplier, we can see they are the world's largest volume supplier of FPGA. And FPGA means that these chips they sell are reprogrammable. If you want to go really into detail what FPGA means, how they work and whatever, please watch a YouTube video about it or read about it because I watched multiple videos before making that video and I didn't really get it. The only thing I got is like that they are re programmable tier one supply with 39 years of innovation nice here we can see a growing customer base so for example Lockheed Martin Microsoft Raytheon Canon Google Cisco Amazon Dell Ford you name it and we can see global support so we can see all of these places are places where they have locations I assume Europe USA and then here Asia and India and I think that might be Israel 
Lattice Executive Leadership Team. And here we can see the leadership team and we can see there are a few women in there. So it's not just the typical only guys. But unfortunately, we can't see any people of color. Let's see how that will change because I personally think it's a, from a business perspective, a good thing to have multiple social groups in your leadership team because then you can see multiple point of views. Offru, if they do their job really, really good, I don't mind like criticizing. I, I don't want to criticize them at all. Holding ourselves to the highest ESG standards, well, obviously, but who is not saying that? I'll make a skip about that as I always do. Products and solution. So let us value proposition. So smaller size, lowest power, higher security, reliable by design, easy to use. So it appears that their semiconductors are actually quite good. Lotus FPA portfolio. So broad family of low power FPJs. And these FPJs are these chips that can be used to be reprogrammed for all kinds of things. And what you can see here is something that is interesting in the way as for example with monolith power systems in the chip market we have lots of different companies and to a certain extent there is a reason for every of these companies to exist and the reason is that chips are basically the oil of the 21st century and that means that if we take a look at the last 200 years oil powered our economy it is still powering our economy but Going into the future, I personally assume that data will become more and more important so that more and more decisions and whole economies itself, themselves, themselves, whole economy themselves, will be powered by data rather than by oil. Obviously, they need electricity for oil. Uh, they need oil for electricity, but I hope you get the point. So data will become more and more important and data is processed by chips. Available now is the Lattice Lexus FDA small FPA platform low. Yeah, so it appears to be a super, super solid chip. As said, I can't really judge whether they are good or not. But what I can see here is something that I personally like. And it is Lattice is up to 75% lower in, in power use. The performance up to two times faster and the re reliability is up to a hundred times better than those of the competitor. And that is something I personally find very, very interesting. Offer, I don't really know why it is the way it is, but if it is true, and I assume it is true, I see a very big advantage of Lattice towards other companies that might bring me to the point where say okay, lattice is a solid investment or not but we'll make a conclusion later in the video but that is something i would definitely you know, keep in mind nexus based low power silicon and here again we can see these fancy silicon or like their machines uh not their machines their chips i personally think that one is the coolest because it has like these things in the middle and if everyone is now like writing in the comment box it doesn't have the things on the real chip yeah obviously but it looks cool hmm. on this slide we can see the software solutions lattice offers for example for enabling ora deployment cyber resilient low power edge AI, low power enabled vision. So apart from only selling the chips, they also have these software solutions. Leadership in computer vision capabilities, advanced AI technology for the edge. And here we can see their, pro, uh, their chips and their software can be used, for example, for presence detection, deep sensing, 3D head and gesture tracking, face ID. Maybe they're the ones that support Apple with their chips. And easy to use software tools, well, obviously. And now let's talk about expanding our leadership portfolio. So it appears as if they now want to broaden their software solutions so that they can attract a larger market with their software. So at the end of the day, they can make more money on us. Again, something to keep in mind appears to be nice, appears to be interesting. End markets and application, point three in the agenda. Positioning growing markets. And well, 
here again, we can see what I said earlier. So for example, 5G wireless, massive market growth. And all of these 5G data, and we need 5G for the next step in our economy, in the next way to, what do you call it? Advance, advance in our economy. We need 5G and 5G needs chips. Compute, if everyone now wants to store things on the cloud in big server farms because that data needs to be processed, whether you process it in data farms, you need chips. Same, automotive. You know how unbelievably complicated it is to process all the data that needs to be processed if you want to have really autonomous cars. Unbelievable. There's also another example for how smart our human brain is. Industrial, well, obviously in a factory nowadays, there are more robots than humans and consumer, for example, something like a smart home. Leading the industry in low power bro programmability. And this is another thing, power consumption becomes more and more important because a data center like that, you know how much power that like consumes. And then you have a year like that, for example, here in Europe, where energy prices are skyrocketing, where electricity is like up 10 times the e that, than it was the average of the last 10 years. Well, then you better make sure that the chips you use in your server farm are not the ones that need the most energy. So, for example, Lattice solves communication challenges like 5G, scalable hardware, and then data center challenges, what I just said industrial challenges, automotive challenges, for example, the 360 degree, uh, degree surround view, human presence detection, all kinds of things, security battery, all kinds of things. And it does solve consumer challenges, like for example, speaker, headphones, uh, smart doorbell, offer I don't really know why people are using like you got a key, you know, it's a pretty old and solid system a key, if you don't lose it. And now finally, let's talk about financials. Strong financial execution. We can see that the revenue, what I mentioned earlier, grows but not that much. And I think that is a point where they should really check how they can make sure that that revenue will grow more. Because the last few years have been years where it, it actually was a really amazing time for semiconductor companies. But what we can see and what is unbelievable is the gross margin expansion. Look at that. Like that is very, very, very amazing. Then the operating income percentage wise. Gee. Then the earnings per share guys from 11 cents to $1 and six cents. Yeesh! That is, that is solid. That is very solid, guys. And if that growth continues, so after I don't think it will be increasement by roughly 10 times over the next four years again, but let's just say it increases by five times, then we got like $5 per share. That is, that is very solid. And here we can see the net cash. If we take a look at the Q2 earnings 2022 that just happened. We can see that, especially comms and computing, industrial and automotive are up a lot year to year and year, but we can see consumers down year and year. Okay, but earnings per share up year and year 68%, cross margin expanding by 700 base points year and year. So we got here 69.1 cross margin. And here we got 63. I mean, holy macaroni. That is solid. And like you imagine that cross margin continues to go up and then we see maybe the revenue doubles. Delicious. That is, that is delicious. Just like really nice hamburger. Delicious. If that would happen. Obviously, if the revenue would go to zero tomorrow, I don't really care about the cross margin. Lettuce semiconductors. So that's it. Now we take a look at trading view. And here we can see the current performance of the stock. We can see it's trading at around $50.30. And we can also see that the earnings were always beaten by lettuce semiconductor. And if we take a look at the long term graph, 
we can see holy macaroni that's a good chart and a bad chart at the same moment so we can see in the early 90s in the dot-com hype the stock went up to 42 and so from here to here we got 3,700 3,071 percent and from up here to down here we managed first of all over the from 89 to 2008 a solid 11 percent performance hmm, i don't know but from up here minus 64 percent but on the other side from down here of from here we got 3500 percent or if you sold up here 6000 percent which is pretty damn solid but the actual movement came here but the actual movement then i just switched to logarithmic if you're wondering came from run about here so 2018 2019 and here and that is another really lovely example for what i said recently with the video about and face energy check it out if you like to these big movements these six thousand percent performance offer with end phase it's even more you wouldn't really have that you, you won't have that performance and the reason is in 2008 or february 2009 no one bought the stock at one dollar thirty especially not if it was just down 90 percent from up here over 90 percent is the stock a buy right now i certainly don't know a thing that i find attractive is what i've mentioned the very high cross margin the massive growth in earnings per share also another thing that i personally like is the company is just valued at seven billion dollars and it's easier for a company of a value of seven billion dollars to do a 10 bagger than for example for apple now all through both can happen i personally would prefer buying the shuffle sellers for example lam research isml applied materials because they simply apply more to me because lattice semiconductor depends more on ASML or Integris than for example Integris or ASML depend on lattice semiconductor. On the other side I'll definitely take a look at the stock having on my watch list and I think if you do a small position or do it with a monthly rate where you don't make it the largest position you have if it continues to show that performance that increase in the operate in the cross margin increase in the operating income increase in the earnings per share and especially as soon as the revenue really kicks and starts to grow at 10 or 15 percent per year because here we had 28 percent year on year revenue growth i think the stock might become very attractive on the other side if we take a look at here right now on the daily chart we can see from the high up here we are already down almost well 41.5 percent and just said i wouldn't put all my money in it right now i certainly won't be buying it right now but what you can do is make a monthly saving plan and then let's see what happens but again i mentioned i'll keep it on my watch list and we will take a look at it in a few months from now and it would be good if you subscribe to my channel because then you won't miss that video and with that said see you soon guys bye